It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Burrard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is making seniors aware of care options. Joining me is John Fredrickson, publisher of Senior Scene Magazine, and Carrie Fink, media director of Helping Seniors of Burrard. You know, I think it's extremely important for you, our viewers, to understand the importance of what Carrie and John and I will talk about today. We, we are, we're going to talk about the ways we try to make seniors aware of the many care options that we already have in Brad County. Many of them are free. Many of them are available, especially to seniors. But if people don't know about them, what good are they, Carrie? What good are they, John? They're not very good, are they? No, and I've gotten my share of phone calls from the residents in Brevard County asking where they can get the help, it's whether it's help with an attorney or a residence or a hospice, and they just don't know where to turn. And Wait a minute, you're, are, you, are you saying that Senior Scene Magazine, you get calls from people? And then, yes. But you do, turn them over to Kay? I certainly do. Uh, folks, for you to understand, Kay, Kay Kaiser is our information specialist at helping seniors, and you can reach her to do what the information with John is talking about by calling 473-7770. 473-7770, that's a good number to put in your book. Gary, what would you add to what John is saying? Well, I think it just echoes what we learned. As you uh, know, both of you gentlemen know, we fielded a survey in 2015, which you very kindly helped us get out into the community, and we wanted to ask seniors what the number one issue was. And we found out over and abundantly that the number one request that seniors had for all the needs that they could they could identify, the number one was typically, surprisingly maybe even, was information. Mm -hmm. It's not that maybe things aren't out there that people can advantage themselves of, but you know the old saying, for the lack of knowledge, people perish. And they need, that's why it's so important that we have the information hotline. It's a place for people to get connected to that information. Well, I was talk for a minute about John's magazine, Senior Scene Magazine. Uh, before we started taping the show today, you showed me a column in there by the uh, Secretary of Elder Affairs by the state of Florida. How do you get that? Why do you get that? What do you think is so important about that column from the uh, Department of Elder Affairs for your magazine? Right. Several years back, uh, we were introduced to the periodical that the office in Tallahassee puts out a uh, monthly newspaper and through that realization we wanted to bring to Brevard County the information that the secretary puts out every month the topic of their choice and bring it to our seniors here it, it I, I wonder how many of our seniors are aware of the resources in Tallahassee uh, and what they can do for them here so we felt the need to put that information in our magazine monthly. You know, what what what, what John is talking about, folks, uh, the Department of Elder Affairs for, Secretary for, for the State of Florida gets millions of federal care dollars, Medicaid dollars, general revenue dollars that are directed to nonprofit organizations throughout the state of Florida here in Broad County. And those dollars are to be used to help seniors. And that's why it's so important that uh, you know we we made a com we made a statement two years ago that uh, Florida was an elder friendly state, mm -hmm. and I think it was roughly eight or nine years ago that the Brevard County Commissioners Board of Commissioners proclaimed issued a proclamation stating of Florida, that Brevard County is an elder friendly community, but so many times. I have a question, what do we mean by an elder-friendly community? I mean, at first they came out and said, well, 
We want uh, sidewalk, wide sidewalks, and we want street lights so seniors can walk at, at, at night. Uh, you know, I, I, age, I don't want to go out and walk on a sidewalk at uh, 10 o'clock at night. I don't want to fall and break my neck. To me, being an elder friend in the community means what are the resources? What are the attitudes of the people? And uh, I'm talking too much, but I got to say this. If we say that Florida is an elder-friendly state and Bird County is an elder-friendly community, and we invite people to come here and live with us, we know that they're going to bring problems with them. Older people bring aging problems. And I'm much more aware of that now that I'm a very senior citizen. So I know the problems. I know that we need better systems in place, especially what you two are talking about, awareness. Mm -hmm. Gary, what do you... What would you well, you know, it's interesting because when we did this survey and we started to look at the kind of results that people were telling us that they had issues with, a lot of times the services existed. I mean, everything from transportation to housing, they need uh, information on accessing health. Sometimes it's a question about Medicare. And think about how successful that helping seniors of Brevard has been through the information hotline of really just being that connector saying, you know, are you are you aware of what the Veterans uh, uh, Administration could provide in terms of things like aid and attendance? Are you aware of the transportation options that could get you to a doctor? They, these are very real problems. And what 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 helping seniors is able to do is to close that gap and make sure people know that services are available or perhaps even uncover a need that, hey, this is something that we do need to work together as a community and address. I think it's important that the viewers understand and know that there's no other organization that does radio, television, and printed media. And right now we're in Senior Scene Magazine, Hometown News, Ebony Magazine, Ebony News Today, uh, Aldea, the Spanish paper, and uh, Spotlight Magazine. It's important. And we came to you a number of months ago and talk to you about a newsletter. And what was your initial response, John, or what were your initial thoughts when you had an organization that helped seniors, came to you as Senior Scene Magazine and said, how about putting a newsletter in your magazine? What did you think about that request? Well, it's about time. Um, <laughs> it, it's a perfect venue, a perfect way to get out to the people in Brevard County. I just wonder how else we can do it. Um, you know, we distribute this free. so. People don't have to pay to pick up the newsletter that you guys put out with all the information. There's a lot of trusted resources in there that the seniors can turn to. And it was a great idea, and uh, I'm glad I can help uh, providing it. Well, so jump on. If people see this and they go to the center section, they can rip this. The Save yellow page, they can rip the yellow page binder right out. Of, it's, it's, a, it's a newsletter. And in this one, it had a message from me talking about some things. The, uh, there was a column in there about the importance of bra bad breath by Dr. Mm -hmm. Sheldon Dentist. Mm -hmm. There was a column about uh, um, for the elderly, how to protect mm -hmm. themselves. There was a column about uh, senior modification and handyman services. Uh, about the living will, Bill Johnson did a lot on living will. It was a, a VTOS and one from the VA, another about financial advisors. And it had a list of network providers, people, and that's something we're working on. And mm -hmm. that's a perfect time. Carrie, maybe you could tell our viewers about what, what are we talking about, a provider network? What do we mean by that? Well, it's, a, it's an important part of it because I always use the argument that aging is on the job training. None of us have any experience with it until we find ourselves in the middle of it. Well, <laughs> you've been leading the way for many years, Joe. But the point is, what, what we know is that a lot of times you run into a situation and it's almost like you've arrived at the scene of a fire. And now there's something that, you requ that you're required to deal with that you really don't have experience with. And at that moment, having a network that you can call somebody and say, I've never confronted this situation before. Who do I call? And a lot of times it can be things that, that we're already equipped to help connect. We, the number of calls, for example, we refer over to our friends at Shine to help them understand options medically and things like that, or for, for housing situations or transportation situations. But there's a whole nother layer of this, which is 
Uh, you've done several shows, for example, with Laura Moody, who's our assistant uh, state attorney, and one of the topics over and over and over again is unscrupulous vendors going to seniors and in the guise of helping them resolve a problem at their home or with something that they're trying to do, end up taking advantage of that situation and causing much greater damage than the person had to start with. So the goal of the Helping Seniors Provider Network is simply to do to create a group of, of concerned businesses and organizations here in Brevard County that pledge, that pledge ethically to treat our seniors with the respect that they deserve in the same way as the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that's what we're compiling as we move forward this year, the Helping Seniors Providers Network. And it can encompass everything from auto dealers to auto mechanics from people that you might invite into your home. I have a problem with my air conditioning. They told me my roof is leaking. Whatever the it, my foundation has a problem, who do I call that I can trust that's not going to rip me off? And we want to be sort of at the forefront of putting together that Helping Seniors Provider Network. Well, to underscore what you're talking about and to underscore the importance of what John puts in his magazine, in the current issue of Senior Scene Magazine, there's a column in there by Mr. Van Arsdale from the uh, Veterans Affairs for Broad County. Uh, they come under the uh, Broad County Housing and Human Services. They, they, I think they help pay for it. But the VA there, you can actually walk in, a veteran can walk in, and there are so many different types of services that you can receive from the VA that people are just aren't aware of. And one of the biggest we found, and we find a number of single elderly women living alone, and I gave a talk to about a, a group of uh, over a hundred Harris employees, and there were two women that came up after the show and asked for my card because I had talked about the VA aid and attendance program and said what they could do, and by virtue of the fact that both of their husbands had served in World War II, these women became eligible for an additional amount of money of roughly $1,400 per month in addition to the 800 they were mm -hmm. getting from the Social Security. So it was like a, a you know, it was like a publisher's clearinghouse mm -hmm. windfall for those two women because you know, they weren't living on $800 a month anymore. Now they were going to live on $2,400 a month, which are eight and 14, $2,200 mm -hmm. a month. That's a, that's a great deal of difference. My, 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 my uh, computer didn't work too quick. But this is what's so important, Kerry. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that Senior Scene Magazine is, I think you probably are the, the first to do this or not. That I'm aware of, sure. It's you're the first one to do mm -hmm. it. What are some of the other things, Carrie and John, that you both see as a need for our viewers to know more about uh, in terms of how they can help themselves, help help themselves and help others? What are some of the other things that you have seen, Carrie? You well, uh, you know, you just did a radio show. Uh, here with uh, Bill Johnson, who's a board uh, certified elder attorney, and tuning into your radio show for that hour is almost the equivalent of you know paying four or five hundred dollars to sit with an attorney and get some some real insight into the things that uh, the things that you might want to consider. And I mean, these are very practical things that it may not necessarily be somebody. Oh, I don't have a multi million dollar estate, but they're very practical things. Just when you guys talk over issues, for example, like what happens if you become hospitalized and somebody needs to make decisions on your behalf, as a good example, and the kind of information that. That, uh, that you bring into those kind of programs is in, invaluable. And when you read uh, John's publication, Senior Scene Magazine, not only is the Helping Seniors newsletter in there, but his, his publication typically is chock full of very practical things. Like I said, if aging is an on-the-job training kind of thing, it's really a, a good manual or a good primer because there's lots of good information about things that you might want to be aware of that could not only dramatically improve the quality of your life, but in fact could end up saving your life. John, when you talked about uh, having the uh, input from the Florida Secretary of Elder Affairs, that's just another venue for the 
the everyday citizen as an avenue that they can make their needs known to the leadership in the state of Florida because there is a vehicle for using a Department of Development Affairs access. You can access them and it comes through your magazine, correct? Yeah, we need to realize that it is a two-way street that this now provides the information to the readers that there is an organization they can contact and how to contact them. But I want to go back to the provider network a little bit that a lot of folks, I bet, don't realize that the providers that will come through the Helping Seniors of Brevard organization will have a special insight into seniors. It's, it's not an obvious uh, talent to be able to recognize special needs that a senior has, whether it's in, in the area of home repair or car repair or, or financial help, that there are special issues that seniors have to deal with that these providers will be in tune to because this is one of the uh, group of people that they deal with frequently and they'll have that special expertise and that's important to it these is providers. Important. Yeah, it's very important and, and uh, you bring the point of it as what, uh, our current information specialist uh, when, when somebody makes a call she, she hears what they're saying but she's also listening for what they don't say and invariably she turns up different needs Maybe they maybe this person has called another organization for help and has been waiting weeks. I didn't say days, waiting weeks for a return call. Or a person realizing and knowing that there are care dollars available or should be available for citizens that qualify, especially people, you know, most people don't realize that uh, we have a little thing called an activity of daily living. As we get older, we need help sometimes in dressing, sometimes in cooking, cleaning our house, um, uh, transportation. We can't get to the doctor. I can name things. There are, there are dozens of activities of daily living. It only takes two or three or four of those to qualify people mm -hmm. for assistance. Now, if somebody's a multimillionaire, you don't, you're not going to qualify for this kind of help. But to people living on eight, nine, twelve hundred, fourteen hundred dollars a month, they're going to qualify for things that will help them. And so many people that are getting older, they, they wonder how they're going to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why we started the Elder, Older American Act. And that's why Lyndon Johnson did that in 1965. We realized that there were going to be people that needed help to age and dignity. And both of you, I'd like to talk just for a few minutes about our advocacy council for the uh, for helping seniors and what 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 they did, what you all participated in, Carrie. Um, you started it by talking about the survey we did. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you could add a little bit of an art, and then John could pick up and see what he's observed as as a publisher and the value of making our board of county commissioners aware of the need of seniors and the fact that we don't have an aging plan and we need to do something about it. What are right. you two thoughts about it? Well, I would certainly say that the reason the Senior Advocacy Council became a, a tool that really was necessary is because Brevard County prides itself in calling itself an elder-friendly community. And like you pointed out, once you get past the idea of having, you know, a wide sidewalk and, and nice street lights or something at night, what, what are we really talking right. about? And, and I think what we're really talking about is making it a place, you know, for many years, um, you you worked under the banner of aging with dignity because that really sums it up. We're all going to, God willing, we're all going to grow older. Hopefully, we can do that in a way that's meaningful and 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 enjoyable, and with the help that we need to do the things we need to do. So, when it came down to the advocacy council, the first question is: Have we identified what seniors in our community? There's 125,000 plus. 65 plus year old residents were what the 22nd or 24th oldest, 24th, 24th, 24th oldest, oldest county by percentage in the entire United States of America out of you know how many ever many tens of thousands of counties are in America so 3067 3, so and we're number 24 so that means we should be keenly aware of what our seniors need 
But yet one of the things that was the very first thing that the Senior Advocacy Council talked about is, but we don't have a county-wide aging plan. And so the first job of this organization, which is composed of volunteers, it's just what you were referring to, like-minded people who are seniors who don't want to necessarily be part, they don't want to add to the problem, they want to be part of finding the solution to the problem. So let's work together, let's identify what the needs are. That began with a survey, which led to creating a sort of a, a overview draft of a, um, an outline of, a, of an aging plan that we collectively submitted to the uh, Brevard County Board of Commissioners. And I think now uh, over the next year, we're gonna continue to see if we can uh, help press that idea forward. Kept urge it forward a little bit. Urge maybe. it forward, that's yeah. a good way to put it. John, <laughs> you got a smile. As a publisher, you sat there and you, were, you came to all the meetings, you offered input. Uh, as a guy that runs a magazine, you're organized. What would you comment on the value of of the advocacy council and trying to organize a way for us to age with better with dignity? Yeah, as I get more and more involved, I am a little concerned on the size of the task. Um, there are a lot of issues out there that the uh, seniors are dealing with. The, the survey showed that, mm -hmm. and to get your arms around it is somewhat of a, a daunting task. And the people in the organization, the council, that have had experience dealing with such things or personal experiences that lend uh, ideas for solutions, whether it's an individual solution or whether it's a solution for the, the overall approach, all that has been so valuable uh, in, in getting a handle on this. But yeah, you know, the, the whole task at hand is a bit overwhelming for me to uh, take in. And I, I guess I see it as, well, how do you organize that? And the aging plan, as it's put together so far, really seems to address the issues uh, in total and then individually that could give a great aid to the county and, and how to approach this. It, it, it's something that doesn't show up, uh, obviously, to the residents of the county as well. Wow, that road was fixed. You know, everybody sees that and they're all happy. And this is kind of a, almost a, a hidden population. Yeah that when you help them, you don't necessarily hear about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and the recognition for the, the government might not be there. And how do we do that? How do well, we you know, I, I, I served as the chairman of the Commission on Aving for three years. And I kept advocating for a plan. And uh, I kept being uh, met with the issue of, well, we don't have the money. I said, you'll never have the money until you have a plan. Mm -hmm. You have to show, not just the commissioners, but you have to show the people at the county why they need what is being proposed. Mm -hmm. Now, several counties in the state of Ohio, you've seen uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Casey's, Governor Casey's, as he got, gets up on television and he's running for president, he has commented what they've done in the state of Ohio. What they did in certain counties was the people themselves recognized they all had to be part of the solution, as you mentioned the word solution, Carrie, when you start the program. And what they've done, as they said, for every $100,000 of property value, we are going to contribute $29 for every $100,000, and that's going to go into an elder fund mm -hmm. to help fund these issues. Mm -hmm. That, to me, makes sense. Years year ago, a couple of years ago, when Broad County put in the six cent sales tax or the half penny sales mm -hmm. tax for the uh, for the Joe's program, that was going to bring in thirty two million dollars. Mm -hmm. And right now, in county based operation funds to go to nonprofit organizations to help seniors, children, juvenile delinquents, and everything else, that's a half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. That's a drop in a huge bucket. We're going to have to increase that. Now we do it either. We either cut part of government out to do it, or we get the private sector to pick up more. But as a member of the private sector, I don't want to give my dollars to an organization 
that's going to put them someplace else, just like the federal government did with Social Security dollars. Mm -hmm. If we have a fund, we need to have control over it. And that's why Helping Seniors in 2016 hopes to start the first elder endowment through raffling mm -hmm. a 1992 1992 XJS V12 Jaguar that's ruby red with 38,000 miles, and it's a collector's piece. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. But that's how you can start thinking out of the box. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important. We're almost out of time, Kerry, John. Your final comments, Kerry. Well, you know, I just wanted to kind of close with this thought that, you know, a written aging plan, you know, in our survey, 63% said that was very important. And another 24% argued it was somewhat important. So when you add that up, you're getting pretty close to about 90% of the people who say you need this plan. And the, the basic premise is, if you don't have a plan, how do you know where you're going and how do you know when you get there? So I think that it's incumbent to get people involved with helping seniors. If you have a desire to get involved in the Advocacy Council, join us because we've got to get this plan together. Okay. John, you got 20 seconds. Let, let's find some ways to get the information out to people. Let's try to think of new ways, uh, unconventional ways, to get information out to our seniors in the county. And that's what we're going to do with helping seniors through our radio, television, and printed media. And you stay with us. We'll stay with you. John, Kerry, I want to thank both of you for being with us today because I think this is something that's really important for people to know. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses, and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.